So guys, um, I would like to show you some facts and some information about Serapium Sakara. Sakara is um, known mostly for stepped pyramid of Djoser from the 3rd dynasty uh, attributed to architect Imhotep. Uh, this place has uh, you know, significant meaning uh, in religion, in uh, power of ancient Egypt. You can see uh, Apis Bus, uh, the symbol of fertility uh, for ancient Egyptians. Um, there's a reason for it. Uh, you know this animal is uh, very useful uh, in agriculture. Uh, it's very powerful animal actually. It can. Uh, it's even better than horse for uh, some specific uh, works. But uh, also, uh, Aptah is uh, connected with this place. The god from uh, uh, ancient Egypt, very powerful. Uh, also, the god of creativity, craftsmanship and we'll find a connection between these things uh, you can see the view from uh, top uh, at the complex uh, uh, it's, it looks pretty industrial what you think uh, now it's a ruin uh, you can see that the entrance uh, to Serapium is uh, uh, close to the pyramid and um, looks like this so uh, we are going to talk about uh, underground complex, Serapium, which is supposed to be some kind of necropolis. So it's, it's meant to be a place where uh, sacred bulls are uh, bur buried. This is the entrance. Um, you can see it's carved into limestone bedrock. Um, here you can see the ancient depiction of uh, the main uh, uh, part of Serapium, the corridor, and on the left and right side, uh, not opposite each other, but uh, uh, you know there are these niches and uh, these huge sarcophaguses uh, from granite. You can see the dim dimensions uh, of this uh, uh, corridor. Um, I will try to model it in 3D. You will see it. And um, I didn't have uh, the exact uh, measurements in millimeters or something, but uh, you will see it will be enough for this uh, proof that I'm gonna make. Uh, you can see some old pictures uh, from inside. Uh, there is uh, not so much space you can see it uh, check the quality of the walls uh, this is maybe a deck of uh, or lid or of uh, the sarcophag uh, uh, it's from granite uh, that means uh, it's not from this location it's from somewhere else uh, probably from us one uh, on this picture you can see this uh, huge sarcophagus uh, they are estimated uh, you can try to calculate it uh, uh, the granite uh, has some specific um, uh, attributes uh, it's very heavy it's uh, very, it's, um, very dense uh, it's uh, really something is a really good material for to survive millenniums of years you know uh, this is the reason why it was used to check the quality of uh, of uh, manufacturing, check the overall design and compare it to uh, the design of interior walls of Serapium and um, there is a difference. So this is not consistent the quality of this work with the quality of uh, the wall. Uh, so you need to know is um, this uh, box was uh, cut from one piece of granite and uh, uh, it also has uh, some special reason but um, considering this uh, you have to uh, realize that uh, uh, how, how much weight uh, actually it has so um, you can make some calculation uh, the granite is very dense uh, 
but let's let's uh, start analyze how not how it was manufactured but how it was uh, uh, actually installed in uh, Serapium. Um, you can see this name Canvaset and um, it is the supposed uh, creator of uh, Serapium. Okay, we need to move one ton box. Um, it's this much car. It's not uh, something very easy to move. Uh, if you have a car that weighs like uh, 1,350 uh, kilograms, uh, it will be this much. And uh, just imagine um, the problems uh, that you will have uh, moving this uh, this object. Well, I need to uh, tell you that um, I realized one thing. Uh, if you want to um, explain something or change your mind of maybe Egyptologist, uh, you need to use their weapons. So we need to find a way how it could be done by means uh, that Egyptologists say that uh, it was done or Egyptologists say that uh, ancient Egyptians uh, was uh, moving the heavy things. We can, uh, we can see here uh, the famous uh, depiction of moving of uh, like uh, 658 tons uh, alabaster statue and there is uh, depicted like 170, I don't know how many uh, people, maybe 180 people. Uh, moving the uh, statue, okay, with ropes, uh, this guy in the middle is pouring some something to make uh, the uh, coefficient of friction uh, lower, so <laughs> these slides or the sledges uh, are uh, moving uh, easier. So in our problems with uh, 70, 80 or 100 ton box is uh, we need uh, this much people. Uh, it's a lot of people. It's like uh, 300 people, maybe more. Uh, here's the equivalent in uh, in uh, oxen. So uh, let's try to find out uh, how it can be done. Let's go inside.
okay here we are inside and um, let's try to use uh, a route to uh, make it possible uh, this uh, boxes uh, uh, fitted inside uh, niches um, I have uh, calculated uh, the biggest uh, uh, dimensions of uh, such timber uh, like 30 per 30 centimeters is like 12 inches per 12 inches uh, it's questionable with wood uh, in Egypt uh, they can they could have some uh, cedar trees from Lebanon some imported wood uh, so okay I have considered this uh, the strong wood uh, in this uh, in the calculations but you have to know that if you add uh, this uh, this is like two and a half meter or two meters uh, if you if you add a uh, lot of this um, uh, in a row uh, the capacity of such uh, element is reduced uh, significantly so it will start bending and all these other things okay here are the calculations um, it's a standard thing uh, you can see that uh, 12 per 12 uh, inches can uh, have capacity of uh, 100,027 pounds which is quite a lot but you have to remember it's only two and a half meters so uh, when considering something long you have to keep in mind that the uh, capacity is uh, reduced uh, significantly you can see that at the 30 meters which is 100 feet uh, it will weigh uh, already two tons uh, uh, 30 per 30 centimeters and the capacity is only 40 uh, 4000 uh, pounds so it's not enough you we would need uh, maybe 20 of them and there is no space for that um, as you can see with wood is like uh, either it's um, uh, long enough either has uh, capacity enough uh, or either there's enough people working not all these things together so it's not possible but let's watch it okay this is the this is the thing that uh, uh, okay this this device uh, probably wouldn't bend you know uh, and you could uh, make uh, really uh, that um, force with it that you need uh, with uh, an enormous amount of people maybe you can see here maybe 300 people or something more but um, uh, this is the problem it will weigh uh, like uh, 72 tons uh, more so it's like you have to push another box so you, you basically didn't solve any problems with uh, device like this so this is not good long uh, another thing is um, you can see here with the short uh, short uh, timbers uh, uh, I was calculating maybe four uh, and a half meters I think something like that uh, you can uh, like have like 36 people uh, working uh, but uh, which would be the enough capacity but uh, not enough people working even if you have two or three groups like this working okay and there is no place for more groups Ropes. so why don't we use uh, horses to do the hard work um, you can see here um, horse pulling uh, in the back you see the blocks uh, waiting I mean this horse these two horses can carry uh, several of these uh, blocks uh, it could be around uh, something maybe ton or even maybe more than a ton so uh, ropes bollard and friction that's the that's the thing that we're gonna concentrate now um, we can uh, easily di dimension uh, such a rope um, not easily but uh, we can we can do it um, you see the the mechanism of calculation uh, uh, for example, uh, we would need five ropes of uh, 13 centimeters diameter or, or one rope uh, 29 centimeters diameter uh, for um, safely to work with uh, such an ob object. Uh, 
and also the each one uh, meter of rope uh, is gonna weigh only like 35 kilograms so it's not that bad as a wood but there's a problem something else so somewhere else uh, okay uh, here you can see the coefficient of uh, frictions uh, different materials uh, you can see hemp rope timber timber you can see horseshoe concrete so uh, don't forget also these horses as you, as you saw on the pictures uh, picture you, they had uh, some um, problems with friction um, so basically it's uh, it's easy to calculate but uh, also it's uh, good to use um, empiric uh, uh, you know um, calculation uh, for example also Wikipedia and also the, then that uh, depiction of uh, Egyptians uh, are showing us something around uh, really that we would need like uh, 300 people for uh, considering all these friction problems uh, 300 people for dragging uh, these things so again outside it's not a problem we are inside we are underground uh, and uh, the problems are starting so even with uh, bola uh, with bollards okay this is not with bollards so this is the normal situation a lot of people some people will would be uh, pushing some people would be pulling uh, okay they can make it uh, at maybe this point but uh, don't forget you need to make a turn and put it into uh, niche uh, so that it this this is the problem this is the problem and uh, they just uh, cannot do it uh, just by uh, pulling or pushing okay and there is also problem with the quantity you can see uh, uh, lots of ropes uh, it's uh, known from the lifts you know where you have to uh, not just calculate when it's when it breaks but also uh, make a safe uh, calculation when it so it's uh, not breaking you don't want to break this thing and you know the break the rope and break the sarcophagus okay this is the bollards so this is the only system that uh, can be used here that Egyptians may be new uh, and um, a lot of people would be uh, applied to work but uh, there is the friction problem yeah you can see it uh, even this size of rope is underestimated okay so this size of rope is just for uh, pulling not for the bollard uh, with one bollard it would be even bigger but uh, it it would be possible with, with one bollard it would be possible but not with two we'll see the calculation so with one bollard you, you cannot uh, make it turn into the niches okay uh, the calculation um, you can see very easy uh, mathematics uh, t load uh, the force uh, equals t hold uh, uh, multiplied by um, exponential of uh, coefficient of friction and the angle so the angle if you have uh, it like on on a picture it's uh, p radians something around three okay and uh, friction <laughs> this is uh, complicated um, it can be 2.0.2 uh, uh, I think it would be much more so um, uh, I have calculated that uh, uh, with two bollards uh, we would need uh, six times uh, more people and there is of course no place for them so uh, it's not possible to use uh, bollards uh, in this case uh, just uh, it's a really easy calculation and uh, you can try it uh, each time each uh, each time you apply a bollard the the pre the force uh, rises uh, like very much exponentially so this is uh, something that uh, cannot be done by uh, using bollards even if Egyptians use them uh, even if the rope uh, would have uh, also six times more uh, you know dimensions of uh, section of the rope okay how about levers uh, you can see this is the ancient uh, uh, device uh, 
that is used um, for um, uh, lots of uh, lots of things around the world. And uh, when we're gonna apply it uh, in our case, uh, we'll see that if we put some weight, one ton, on uh, here on the left side, and the car, like heavy car, uh, on the other side, uh, yeah, it could work. It it could work like this. And uh, uh, actually, there are some people you will see the link that were uh, trying to use this um, method for uh, calculating how how. Uh, great pyramid could be built but again we see that we would need I think 70 70 of them and uh, for for this much uh, I mean even if we <laughs> if we would need I mean 50 of them it doesn't matter because uh, there is no place you can see we are underground and uh, lever just uh, need uh, space that's that's uh, point of the lever so we cannot use uh, levers underground because there is no space for this. Oh, sorry. At first, I didn't want to even uh, mention this, but um, okay, let's do it. Um, Egyptians, uh, ancient Egyptians, didn't use pulleys. Uh, however, there are some people who were inventing the pulleys. You will see the link um, with a stone um, um, device like this. And uh, um, you know, they are lowering the friction coefficient by this. Uh, but uh, you know, if you if you think about it, uh, it's not. Uh, it cannot be uh, used here. So, what's the story about pulleys? Um, I'm here consistent with uh, mainstream Egyptologist. Uh, for example, if you check this book, uh, Egyptian Ancient Egyptians Masonry, uh, on page 44 and 45, logically those author those authors are assuming that um, ancient Egyptians uh, just didn't know pulleys. Uh, they cannot found it on a preserve uh, boat where using of uh, such device would be very useful um, um, and they didn't they it's not found uh, in the ruins of buildings in um, it's just they just didn't uh, use it uh, because uh, they didn't have um, material uh, strong enough uh, bronze is not uh, good for that for such a weight okay so no police Okay, so let's make some uh, summary of this. Uh, I'm uh, trying to move fast uh, here in this video version because I uh, don't want to, uh, you to be bored. But um, uh, if, you, if you think about it, you have to think about it this way. It's uh, not uh, possible to uh, position these uh, boxes inside niches. You cannot say it's, uh, it would be enormous effort or something like that. Uh, yeah, it would be an enormous effort to bring these uh, grind boxes inside Serapeum, but it's it can be done. It uh, they do it, they did it uh, uh, outside. It's not problem, but uh, this is the point: uh, positioning uh, inside niches, last few meters of Tragovic box is not possible. So, if I, I challenging you to propose uh, a way of doing so, but. Uh, I can model it. It's fun for me, and uh, I'll do it. But um, I don't think so. Yeah, safety first. Uh, but um, I want to say that uh, let's uh, let's have a look uh, about uh, why the context. So let's put this uh, calculation, these things uh, that I made. Uh, let's put it in a wider context and let's see uh, what we can get out of it. Uh, you can just the rest of the presentation. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, just uh, read it for yourself as a, as a book. So here is uh, Apis bull and uh, here we have a Ptah, two symbolics uh, that we will find a connection between. And we need to know that uh, it's all about Ramses, uh, all about uh, his power. He was the greatest uh, one considered to be a great ancestor, really the, the best ruler of uh, ancient Egypt. 
and uh, you can see here uh, his uh, depiction of uh, fighting uh, different nation Hethites, Syrians, uh, uh, later you will see Nubians uh, and all this was uh, then put uh, on uh, on uh, his victories uh, were exaggerated okay and even uh, lies uh, straight lies uh, were uh, were shown on these depictions about this and this is something that uh, uh, mainstream uh, Egyptologists are familiar with okay so it's normal it's normal it's like the same thing that our politicians do okay so I'm s I'm telling it uh, to you because you need to know this context uh, considering his son kind of said suppose uh, that uh, builder of uh, Serapium uh, that um, in those times in any times it's uh, it's uh, normal to do so 